Imagine this, the ground beneath your feet powers your home, your car, and even your entire city. Does this sound like a science fiction show? It's not, it's actually the promise of renewable energy. As fossil fuels run out and our planet gets warmer, we need smarter, cleaner ways to power our lives. Here, we'll talk about three ways earth science is helping with the transition to cleaner energy and how, by learning about geothermal heat, carbon capture, and buried critical minerals, and what tools are helping scientists find them deep underground. So geothermal energy is heat that comes from deep inside the earth, like tapping into a natural underground furnace. The earth's core is incredibly hot and heat slowly rises up through cracks in the earth. There's underground water nearby, it gets heated by the surrounding hot rock, and when it gets hot enough, the water turns into steam. This is especially common near volcanoes and tectonic plate boundaries where there are pathways from deep inside the earth to the surface. We can drill wells to reach that steam and use it to generate electricity. Think of it like a kettle on a stove. The Earth's heat is the stove, the hot rocks underground are the kettle, and the water inside becomes steam. But instead of whistling, that steam rises and spins a turbine to generate electricity, just like how wind turbines work. The best part is that geothermal energy is always available because the Earth's inner heat never runs out. Then carbon capture and storage is actually a way to help protect the planet while we transition to cleaner sources of energy. When we burn fossil fuels, it releases carbon dioxide, or CO2, into the atmosphere. CO2 is a greenhouse gas that traps heat, like wrapping the Earth in a thick blanket, making the planet warmer over time. To help slow down climate change, we can capture CO2 at the source, like at power plants and factories. Special filters grab the CO2 before it escapes into the air. Once captured, the CO2 is compressed and sent through pipelines deep underground, where it is stored safely, keeping it out of the atmosphere. This doesn't erase the impact of burning fossil fuels, but it reduces how much harm is done while we shift towards better energy choices. There are also critical minerals, special metals and elements found in the earth that are essential for powering modern technology. Each of these elements can be used differently. For example, lithium and cobalt help store energy in rechargeable batteries like in electric cars. Rare earth elements are used in strong magnets for wind turbines and electric motors and copper is essential for wiring and electricity flow, used in smartphones, solar panels, and other technology. But here's the thing, there's a limited amount of these minerals within the earth and mining them takes energy, time, and careful planning to avoid harming the environment. It's like Minecraft, you don't find diamond or redstone just lying on the ground. You have to explore carefully and use the right tools. And just like in Minecraft, if you take too much without thinking ahead, the resources run out or get harder to find. That's why scientists use special methods to explore underground. Let's take a look at how some of these methods work. Okay, now imagine giving the Earth an X-ray, just like a doctor does to look inside our bodies. That's what scientists do with a method called seismic tomography. The word seismic means earthquakes, and tomography means creating a picture of the inside of something. So seismic tomography uses earthquake vibrations to see what's underground. Scientists place special instruments called seismometers in many locations to listen carefully to the shaking caused by earthquakes. When an earthquake happens, it sends waves of energy through the Earth. These energy waves move faster through cold, hard rock and slower through hot, soft, or cracked rock. By measuring the time it takes for these waves to arrive at different seismometers, scientists can create detailed images of what the Earth looks like beneath the surface. These images can help us identify hot spots for geothermal energy, safe places to store carbon dioxide, or zones rich in minerals we need for technology. We can also use the Earth's natural electricity and magnetism to learn what's underground, using a method called magnetotellurics. The Earth is constantly being whispered to by natural signals, tiny electric and magnetic waves. These come from things like solar wind, which is energy from the sun that hits the Earth's magnetic field, and from lightning, which creates bursts of electric and magnetic energy. These signals travel through the ground and interact with underground materials in different ways. Metal-rich rocks, like critical minerals, or hot water, like in geothermal hotspots, let the signal flow easily. They're called conductive. Dry, solid, or dense rock blocks or slows them. They're resistive. By studying how these signals move, magnetotellurics help scientists see underground just by listening to the Earth's natural hum. Another powerful tool scientists use is GNSS, which stands for Global Navigation Satellite System. You've probably used GPS to find your way on a map, but scientists use high-precision GPS to watch the ground itself move, sometimes as little as the width of a fingernail. The Earth's surface is constantly shifting, rising, and sinking. 
So with GNSS, scientists can track these movements over time. This is important because if we extract hot water or steam from underground, the surface might sink slightly as pressure is released. Similarly, if we inject carbon dioxide for storage, the ground might rise or bulge a little from the added pressure. GPS can tell us if the ground is moving safely or if there's a sudden change in something before it becomes a problem. With scientists using methods like seismic tomography, magnetotellurics, and GNSS, we can locate critical energy sources deep underground and keep those systems safe to protect the planet while we transition to smarter solutions.